welcome back Bible study participants to the do-it-yourself Bible study during Lent. We are taking a deeper look at the I am sayings of Jesus found in the Gospel of John. I'm Pastor Carol Hill, the senior minister here at Park Ridge Community Church, and it is our joy to welcome you onto this series and this journey. This Bible study accompanies and accentuates the Sunday morning worship, and so we hope you'll join us for worship as well. Would you bow your heads with a word of prayer? God, our shepherd, we're trusting that you will lead us through this life. Help us to navigate the challenges that present themselves. Teach us to lean and trust in you. Help us to recognize your voice. And help us to not be persuaded to follow alternate voices. Help us recognize you, that we might be faithful. We trust you. We open ourselves to you this day. Amen. As we dive into this sermon series and this Bible study, there's a beautiful spoken word, a poem that I wanted you to experience. Take a look. Before fluorescent formations ever fomented the foundations of your firmament, that is, before the stars in your sky ever entered existence, before the light knew what bright meant, before the sky had a clue where up went, before either were ever invented, I am. Before terrestrial perennials terraced your planet's territorial terrain, that is, before the plants in your ground were ever ordained, before roots were ever arranged, before fruit had a taste, before either had a name, I am. Before the ocean had a bowl, before the surf discovered its role, before the grave was made sheol, before man had a soul, I am. Before Eden was installed, before the garden serpent crawled, before the tree, before the fall, I am. For I am truth, before there ever could be false, I am perfection, before there ever could be false, I am. By all, in all, through all, all, in all, and I am to be called, I am. Before the curse usurped the ground and drove you away from the divine. Before you felt this separation between who you are and the intention of your design. Before you tried to abide in sources of death in order to find life. Before you combined yourself with any form of pleasure you could find. Before you felt so alone, before you felt so dry. Before you tried to run away from my side, I am, I am the vine. Before the cherubim ever guarded the garden. Before the flaming sword was ever sharpened. Before that chasm between God and man was ever widened. Before you lost all hope in becoming a citizen of heaven. Before all you earned was endless flame. Before all you deserved was righteous pain. Before you were a sheep hoping not just to be some lion's prey. Before you were a lost lamb longing for a pen. Longing to escape your fate. I am. I am the gate. Before sustenance turned to gluttony and food became an enemy. Before attraction was based on anatomy and sex was removed from matrimony. Before money became morality and greed grew into the only causality. Before you were empty without me. Before you tried to satisfy your appetite with anything. Before you strive to feel alive by filling your strife with the fleeting vices of your fleshly devices. Before your hunger for relief left pangs in your side. I am, I am the bread of life. Before you became acquainted with pain and death. Before you ever tasted loneliness. Before disease destroyed what you possess. Before eyes could go blind. Before ears could go deaf. Before you lost the one you love to the grave's unyielding cleft. I am. For before mankind stopped living so that they might just survive. I am the resurrection and the life. 
before that sadness that grips your mind led you to darkness and thoughts of suicide before that distortion of man hurt you so that you now hurt yourself before you knew razors and wrists could create a new hell before those wounds turned to scars and those scars became a way of life I am I am the light for before you even knew how to sin I am where your salvation begins for before you withdrew from the path of my way before you willfully and joyously disobeyed before you betrayed the gift that I gave of that breath in your lungs that life in your airways by saying no to my love and yes to your heresy before you engaged with the enemy waged in sin with intensity before you deranged my supremacy and flamed my jealousy before you chose greed over my adequacy lies over my accuracy pride over my advocacy before you chose your sinful self over me I am I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep for before you were a spotted lamb I am for I am the way before you could ever run away from my call I am the truth before you could ever walk away from my law I am the life before you could ever turn away from my cross at Golgotha's skull so I beg you now to withdraw withdraw from your sin for I am your only temptation withdraw from yourself for I am making you a new creation withdraw from your pride for I am ruining your reputation withdraw from your self-righteousness for I am your only mediation withdraw from your hopes and dreams for I am your only expectation withdraw from your life for I am your crucifixion for before all time I am all sufficient before all time and designations to my name alone did the cosmos listen for I am Jesus I am the word I am Elohim I am the Lord I am the Christ I am Messiah I am creator I am Jehovah Jireh I'm the Lamb of God I am Emmanuel I'm the begotten son I am the Holy One of Israel I am the first fruits I am the Prince of Peace I am the bridegroom I am the King of Kings I'm the God of Abraham I'm the God of Jacob I am I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I'm the Holy One worthy of praise, so withdraw into my side, withdraw and be made mine, withdraw and with me stay, withdraw into my way. Pretty great, right? I think that we could all watch that a couple more times and get different things out of those words. He covers the whole gamut of I am sayings and the possible implications of each and every one. So I'm including it for this week, but if you want to watch it again, um, you're certainly welcome to. This week we're studying Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd, which comes to us in the 10th chapter of John. Now, biblical scholars are not in agreement about whether or not chapter 9 and chapter 10 follow each other um, chronologically. There could be a break, it could be a different audience for each, or it might be the same. Chapter 9 in the Gospel of John tells the story of the healing of a blind man, where there's questions about whether or not the blind man or his parents were the ones who were sinning. The Pharisees do an entire investigation to try and figure out whether or not he was really blind. And they talked to his parents and they talked to the blind man. And at the end of it, the blind man has such clarity that he recognizes Jesus' voice. And he's able to speak with such faith and conviction that it seems to follow or lead quite well into this passage where Jesus talks about sheep who will know his voice and not be tempted by other voices. Take a read and see what you think. Do you think they're connected, or do you think they're separate stories? In either case, I challenge you to continue to think about what it means for Jesus to be the Good Shepherd. What sort of qualities do you think about when you think about shepherds? Caring, protective, having good vision about where to go, opening the gate. There's many. 
What is the good shepherd like? What kind of relationship does the shepherd have with his sheep? And what is it about sheep that help them to follow? I used to think that sheep were kind of dumb animals. I think that maybe movies and other stories have helped to uh, further that thought. But I have been recently reading that sheep are quite intelligent, that they're able to distinguish between voices. They know the voice of their own shepherd, and they know the voices that are not their shepherd. They know sheep. They can recognize one another, and they can experience emotions so that when one is led to slaughter, the other sheep exhibit despair and depression. They also can be found leaping for joy and happiness. It's amazing the studies that have been done on sheep around the world. So if you're interested, go and do some research because I think we might have a few things to learn about sheep. After all, they willingly put themselves into the care of the shepherd. Well, maybe not willingly, they're raised on farms, whatever but they learn to trust. They don't get their ego all up in a jam like we sometimes do, but they wholly lean on and listen for the voice of their shepherd. What qualities make for a good follower of Jesus? How are we willing to surrender ourselves and our own can-do mentalities to be faithful, to listen for Jesus' voice, to trust in Jesus' provision and to lean wholly on his understanding? How do we train ourselves by reading scriptures so that we can recognize when it's the voice of our shepherd and not the voice of some other person or other group or organization or whatever? We have a cacophony of voices in our midst trying to lead us this way and that telling us who we should be and how we should act. How do we hear the voice of our shepherd? I pray that as you study this week and as you consider these and more questions, that you will have clarity, that like that blind man, you will have certainty, not being tempted by other voices to lead us astray, but instead being able to faithfully follow our good shepherd. Go in peace.